when the current Secretary of Education moved Michigan from having public schools in Detroit and other cities to having charter schools on the standardized tests, Michigan went from being a middle state to being a bottom state. And so that argues that on balance, this shift from public to private destroys the quality of the education. I'm Peter Tamman, Professor Emeritus of Economics at MIT. The paper is called Finance and Growth. Solo published uh, his growth model in uh, 1956, and more than 50 years later, Piketty wrote Capital in the Economy and said wealth is capital. So increasing the, uh, the scope of capital. But the problem with finance is that there's no approved measure of the output. We know what people are paid and who's employed there, but we don't know exactly what they produce. According to the literature, they produce all sorts of things, but we don't know what they, how they add up. And so the finance sector is recorded in national income, but in national product, since they don't have a measure of the product, it's imputed from the income. And then when the uh, Bureau of Economic Analysis computes investment, investment is defined as private fixed investments. In other words, that was appropriate when Solo was doing his model more than 50 years ago. But it's no longer appropriate now. And finance is nowhere in that system. And so it is in the common parlance of uh, today, it's an intangible. So the paper goes, generalizes from finance to other intangibles, find they are also missing. And so then in the final section, tries to figure out what we are investing in all differences in what I call Keynesian capital, the physical capital, financial capital, human capital, and social capital. So there are two conclusions from this. One is that our national income and product accounts are not accurate. They're too much imputation. And second of all, that when you survey the information we have, it seems like we are not investing adequately in any of these kinds of capital. Finance has gotten too large to contribute to growth, but it rather increases the inequality of income. Human capital is absolutely necessary if we are to keep up with Asian countries. And if we uh, destroy our schools, we won't have adequate human capital to compete with these countries. That's probably the most important of these various intangibles. And we will uh, become Argentina, which was once one of the richest countries in the world, and now is a mid-level developing country. Social capital, first defined by Robert Putnam, is a measure of how much you can trust other people. And it turns out that social capital in the US uh, has really been eroding for quite a while. There's less entertaining and less getting together and, and doing things and so on. And then there's a book about urban development that as Amazon and other mail order places takes over uh, downtown shopping where you can meet your friends or go with your friends uh, is going too. This is not helped by uh, uh, guns in schools. Students, when they're afraid of guns, don't concentrate on what they're supposed to be learning. So there are interactions between these kinds of intangibles. So social capital, if you don't have enough, if you can't call up somebody and make a contract and anticipate that that person will fulfill the contract, then it's very hard to do business. Well, intangibles are called that because they're very hard to measure. Human capital, that is education, you can measure it in some ways. And the Bureau of Economic Analysis is now trying to get a measure of human capital. Social capital, they're kind of, uh, it's like finance, 
people figure there are so many dimensions to it that they find it very hard to find a measure that would go with it. So when they try and expand the solo model, uh, they just put various items in there and uh, say, okay, together that makes social capital. Private equity uh, is uh, specializing in buying up businesses, loading it up with a lot of debt because debt is favored in, in our tax code. Well, if they succeed, then they make money. But if they uh, fail, they get compensated. Uh, the equity holders fail, and of course the workers suffer, like the recent Sears bankruptcy uh, that was taken over by Amazon. Sears was a very uh, paternalistic uh, employer, being an older firm and had a long tradition of taking care of its workers. And Amazon is, is a tougher employer, as people may have read. Well, long-term growth is, uh, is, is going, and we are in desperate need of improvement for our cities. That is to say, improvement of uh, infrastructure, of urban roads, subways, public transportation, bridges. There's also the infrastructure for electric power. The uh, grid uh, needs to be uh, redone and adapted then to the newer technology. But there's been, uh, in the two years that we've observed, he's done absolutely nothing. And what he wants to do is to privatize all of the public capital that is in our cities. The problem with that is uh, that with very few exceptions, uh, these are supported by taxes. Nobody uses enough of the infrastructure uh, to finance it. So if you raise the price of a subway, uh, then people don't take it. But then uh, you have to be willing to take tax money and subsidize the subways. Piketty, when he says wealth is growth, includes government budgets. So that the capital that he's talking about is financial capital, but if you can't finance public capital, you have to have assets minus deficits. And so since we're going to run deficits for several years, it looks like 10 years, 1.5 trillion, not inconsiderable, that is uh, financial disinvestment. There are a few bright spots about people doing research in what helps and what hurts. The problem is that we have other policies that are going in the other direction. Public education is being attacked. In addition, we have mass incarceration. One in three black men will go to jail at current rates. And the children of uh, people who are in jail, their ex experiences in, in uh, schools are much worse. Their performance is bad. They tend to be unruly. They tend to not graduate as much uh, for this, and I just heard that they're more cited for violent activity. It's a whole complex of things again, but they don't learn enough there, and so the threat of guns in school, urban schools with a lot of, uh, of uh, felons around, it means that we need more resources into urban schools, not less as it is today. The, the biggest problem, I think, at the moment is human capital. And so we have to relent on the public schools because uh, what we've discovered is charter schools are all over the map. On balance, uh, they're no better than public schools, but they have a much higher variance. I wrote uh, 20 years ago that it was harder and harder to get teachers in the recent marches of teachers in several states shows that teacher salaries are still very, very low. And so, first of all, you have to support public education. Second of all, you have to support the teachers in public education. You need to be able to attract better teachers. Now, there are always some good teachers now who do it for a cause, but if you had higher salaries for teachers, 
then you would have uh, more teachers like that. And so that's the number one concern, is human capital. That is to say, education, urban education. 